Conventional production of electricity from fuels is a multi-step process. The fuel is burned, creating thermal energy, which is then used to convert water into steam. The steam is then aimed at a series of turbines, and the kinetic energy of those turbines is then converted into electricity. The fuel cell is a much simpler process. In a fuel cell, chemical energy is directly converted into electrical energy by means of a continuous flow of reactants. We're responsible for knowing two cells, the hydrogen fuel cell and the methanol fuel cell. Let's begin with the overall equation in the hydrogen fuel cell. We have hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. combining to create water. Now let's uh, balance this with a 2 here and a 2 here. Now let's turn to my simplified cell shown here. I'm going to give it a direction of electron flow. I'm going to say that the electrons in my particular fuel cell are flowing in this direction. So this side is gaining electrons. The gain of electrons is reduction. And reduction always occurs at the cathode. So the red electrode corresponds to my cathode. The other terminal then is losing electrons. That's oxidation. And that occurs at the anode. Another part of my cell I wish to label is this region in here. We provide an electrolyte. And it facilitates the movement of ions between uh, my electrodes. Now, in the particular equation I'm going to use, a reaction I'm going to use for the hydrogen fuel cell, we're going to use an electrolyte that's basic in nature. Um, say something like potassium hydroxide. So I could go up here and put on this label KOH. Now, our challenge is to determine what is the half reaction occurring at each of the electrodes. To do that, I need to examine what's the oxidation states of my species. So hydrogen is zero, oxygen is zero. Over here, oxygen then becomes negative 2 in water and hydrogen plus 1. So I can see that the hydrogen, to develop a positive charge, it has lost electrons. That places the reaction or half reaction for hydrogen at the anode. So I'm going to put down H2 is converting into H2O. So what that would mean is I have a flow of hydrogen gas coming into this particular side of the cell. Now, uh, coming out the top would be sort of the excess hydrogen, which could be recycled and sent back through a second time. Over at the other electrode, my oxygen, to go from 0 to minus 2, has been reduced. It's gained electrons. So over here, the reaction then would be O2 is forming H2O. So they don't usually use pure oxygen. What they'll do is they'll supply air, which is a mixture of oxygen and nitrogen and trace amounts of other gases. Some of that oxygen will be consumed. So coming out, though, however, will be mostly nitrogen with sort of my excess or remaining oxygen. Now let's proceed to balance these two half reactions. To do that, I'm going to employ a set of uh, rules over here, or steps. First thing we have to do is divide the overall reaction into two half reactions, which we have already done. Balance the elements other than hydrogen and oxygen. Well, in this case, there isn't any. Balance the oxygens by adding water. Well, this side has no oxygen, so I must add a water to it. 
Then we balance the hydrogens by adding H+. There's four on this side. That requires then two H pluses. If the solution is alkaline, or basic in my case, I have to add an equal number of OHs to both sides, as there are H pluses. So I'm going to have to add two OHs to this side, two hydroxides. And this side's going to get two hydroxides. These will then combine and form two water. Now let's do a little bit of simplifying before we carry on. Um, so I'm going to have two OH here. Um, that will cancel with one of those. So I'll have then my hydrogen. And it's going to then form um, essentially two H2O. Because as I say, um, that one will cancel with that one, leaving me those two. Um, our next step in our sequence is we have to balance the charges by adding electrons. So this side would then require two electrons. So I now have a balanced half reaction. Let's apply these steps now to the other equation that's present. So balance the elements other than hydrogen and oxygen, already done. Balance the oxygens in step three. So I'm going to provide two here. Then we have to balance the hydrogens. I'll write it out down here to help with a little bit of room. So we have to put four H pluses on this side, plus the O2, forming two H2O. Again, we're in a basic solution, so I require four OHs to balance the 4H plus, and I must provide those also over on this side. Um, this will then make four water molecules. That can then be reduced or simplified. That can then become two water molecules. So at this point, my reaction would be two water molecules and O2 forming 4OH. I'm now at step five, uh, sorry, six. We're going to balance the charges now by adding electrons. So we'll need four there. So those are my two balanced half reactions. To prove or to sort of verify that I've done it right, I'm now going to proceed to add these two together to make sure that I get the overall equation. To do that, I have to ensure that the electrons that are gained must match the electrons that are lost. So that would require me taking this equation and doubling it before I add them together. So we'll put them both together down here. Um, starting at this side, I would have uh, four hydroxides, two hydrogens, and from the other equation, um, I'm not going to include the electrons because I've already designed them to cancel. I've got two water molecules and an O2 forming four hydroxides. And then from this equation, I have four H2Os. The four hydroxides cancel, and two of the waters will remove that, make it down to two. And you can indeed check that does match my original equation. Let's now take a look at the methanol fuel cell. Same thing, let's start with an overall equation. So we have methanol, an alcohol, and it's usually in aqueous form with some water mixed with it. And we're going to combine it with oxygen. It'll produce carbon dioxide, which is a gas, and H2O liquid. I believe to balance this, I got a two here, a three here, a two here, and a four here. 
As before, the side I'm going to have my electrons traveling in this direction. So this side is my cathode. Again, I'm looking for the reaction which represents reduction. And over here, this must be my anode. And again, I'm looking for oxidation or loss of electrons over on this side. So start off with our oxygen here. It's zero. And then by the time it proceeds over to this side, um, it's developed a negative two. So that would correspond to the oxygen is gaining electrons. So um, that's going to be my reduction reaction. O2 is turning into H2O. So over at this side, again, we would probably provide air as the source of oxygen. Some of it would be used. So we don't have the same composition of air, so I'm going to call it nitrogen and oxygen coming out with a little less oxygen than was present in air. And over here at this side, uh, carbon in this particular compound begins with a negative 2 oxidation state for the carbon. By the time it's become carbon dioxide is now plus 4. So we have here the loss of electrons which is indeed oxidation. So the half reaction here will begin with methanol forming carbon dioxide. In this particular question, our electrolyte is going to be acidic in nature, just to give us a different one to try. So let's begin with this equation here. Everything other than hydrogen and oxygen, the carbons balance, so that's good. We now balance the oxygens next by adding a water molecule to this side. Now we'll balance the hydrogens by adding H+, the acidic particle. And finally, the charges. Total charge on the reactant side is zero, so my product side, I have to bring the, that down to zero. So I'm going to add six electrons. So there's the oxidation reaction occurring over at the anode. Over here at the cathode, um, we'll start with balancing our everything other than hydrogen and oxygen, which is done because they're not there. I'll need two waters to balance the oxygens. That will then require four H pluses to do that. And finally, to balance the charge, I'm going to need four electrons. One last thing to add to this is let's look at what the continuous flow of reactant is. So coming down in here would be my methanol in aqueous form. Um, there would be some production of carbon dioxide, um, so that would probably need to be vented. And then some leftover methanol that could be then recycled and sent back in again. Let's verify the overall equation by adding these two together. I need to make sure that lost and gained are equal. So that would require taking this equation and multiplying it by 3, and this equation and doubling it. The number of electrons are going to cancel, so I'm not going to put them in. But let's begin down here with two water molecules, two methanol. From the other equation, 12 hydrogen ions and three times the oxygen. And on the product side, we've got two carbon dioxide, 12 hydrogen ions, and six um, waters. Okay, now let's cancel. 12 of those cancel. Uh, the 2 will reduce this down to 4. And indeed, that does match my overall equation. So make sure you have a good, thorough understanding of the overall equations for these two particular cells, the hydrogen cell and the methanol fuel cell. Once you have that, you can determine from there what's occurring at the anode and what's occurring at the cathode by examining their oxidation numbers.